But if you're applying to, I mean, I applied to how many? I want to say maybe 10. 10? Wait, you filled out a long application for 10 schools? No, so the long, that's what I'm saying, the long application, again, it also depends on the states you're in. Hi, Jesus. So, <laughs> people. If, if, you're, if you're in Texas, it's actually easier, and Texas is also cheaper. Texas has their own application system. So, they're Ooh. the only state that actually has their own application system. Ooh. So, if you're applying to schools in Texas, you will literally fill out the TXMDAS or something like that. You fill mm -hmm. that out. And they will send one application to all the schools. Oh. So, so, so the secondaries are when you start replying like one by one to the schools. And that is not really a lot because you can have a generic essay and just tweak it to match oh, the schools. Okay. Um, but for the AMCAS application, which is under AMC, mm -hmm. that goes to other states. So that one, again, is the same thing. You do one long application, mm -hmm. you send it to the schools, and if they have any more questions, they'll send you secondaries. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. But your 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 rejection can start from that stage <laughs> <laughs> because you can send that out and they just say thanks but no. But is it thanks but Full no? Stop. It also depends. It depends on if you're an international student. It depends oh, yeah, on if you're a resident thing. of the state because like I'm in Texas right now. Residents of Texas, like the space in medical school in Texas is reserved. Ninety percent of the space is reserved for Texas residents. So not U.S. Ooh. residents, just Texas. So literally, if you're a green card holder or a citizen and you're from Texas or you've lived in Texas, you have a good enough, doesn't even have to be the greatest, you have a mm. good enough score on MCAT and your GPA is good, you will get into med school because there's enough space. There are 11 medical schools in Texas. So oh. there's more than enough space for anybody in Texas who is smart enough and wants to go to med school. Mm -hmm. But if you're from a different state, you only have... Well, 10%. 10% oh, yeah. is left for all the oh, other yeah, states in the US. <laughs> if you're an international student, 0.1%. 0.1%? <laughs> in the schools that accept. So not all the schools accept international students. That's another thing. So in Texas, only two schools, okay. Only two MD schools, I mm -hmm. think, accept international students. Wow, which are out of Baylor, 11. Baylor and another one now that I'm not remembering. But Baylor is the one that said 0.1%. Oh, okay. <laughs> because they do accept, like, rarely. But other schools do not accept. They'll just tell you straight up, we do not accept international students, period. So that's part of the reason why I didn't... Like, I would be foolish to apply to a school in Texas because they do not accept They're international, international students. Like, they will just reject my application. And mm -hmm. it costs money to send those applications. Like, it's not a one payment. Every additional school you pay. You pay. You so ten schools you paid for each of them. I don't even want to think. I'm in severe pain. <laughs> I'm in severe pain. <laughs> I don't want to think about the amount of money. Schools make money. Like they if do. you count, if if it's like if it's an okay school, they will mm -hmm. get like five thousand applications. Each application costs like these are the secondaries. Each application mm -hmm. costs like hundred dollars. Yay, Jesus. So hundred dollars. That's the average. It can be as cheap as seventy five. Wow. That's the average. And you apply to ten schools. Imagine that. You apply to ten $1, schools. $1, or so it's like that that's on you. Now imagine five thousand people that's applying. Yeah. And whether you get in or not, you have to pay that fee. So they just make money. <laughs> that's true. They made they made money off it. Then imagine a school like Harvard or Stanford that get so Stanford, hundred. Stanford like they can get close to like, what is ten thousand? Hundreds of thousands. Yeah. And oh. out of that they will pick like hundred people. So it's extremely competitive. Like, mm extremely 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 part um competitive to get into medical school in the u.s very 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 competitive um and unfortunately even more so for international students and i really don't know the reasons behind this i just feel like the u.s feels like it's a big investment to like i guess to create a doctor <laughs> because like they have like they spend a lot of money on loans and on it's a lot it's a yeah. lot so i can understand like them wanting to spend the money that they have making doctors for themselves because international students they feel like you can come here get the knowledge mm -hmm. and then leave, and then leave. Oh. so they would have lost 10 years of investment in your life so they would rather give that spot to somebody who is a citizen which i mean everybody likes to better their own self so i kind of understand but it's still cruel on stage in my opinion so the whole process is um 
well to become a doctor so you go to college take your prereq you can do whatever um major you want to i don't know why they used to trouble us in nigeria to do science you want to become a doctor you have to do science i mean because like those sciences you eventually take them as prereqs pre uh, so it's just it's just up to you and how much exposure you want mm. because like i mean you can do fine arts but when you come to med school there's no <laughs> fine arts there's, <laughs> there's zero fine arts so you can do fine art. that's fine and good but when you come to med school, you are going to be doing physiology, anatomy, pathophysiology, pathology, um, what else do we do? Histology. Like, wow. these are hardcore science, science classes. Courses. If you are, if you have not been immersed, which is why, like, um, counselors, like, advise that you do sciences as your background. Because you're already used to the workload. If you're mm -hmm. coming from a different field, you might just be like, for goodness sake, anatomy, <laughs> physiology, they're all biology. Why do you have to separate them? I heard you might not be used to it. I heard anatomy is one of the hardest classes. Eh, I mean, to be honest, like I said, I like learning. It's just that I don't have enough time to learn. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy learning. Like, I feel like anatomy is fun because mm. I personally felt like all the things that make up a human being, like, mm -hmm. I can see them. Also, we had labs, so, like, you actually go, you see a cadaver, a cadaver is a dead body. Mm. You see like a dead body and it will literally be taken apart. So every single thing that makes up your hand, like we have seen the inside. So I know, mm. like when I see my finger move, I know exactly why. And that's why I like medicine because I feel like it's so empowering for me to know exactly what is inside this flesh and to know how it connects to work. So I feel like anatomy is fun. It's just that we don't have time to catch fun. <laughs> <laughs> It's just a lot of content. of content. You don't have like if you're learning this on your own pace, you would enjoy it. But unfortunately, you don't have time to learn on your pace. <laughs> so yeah. Okay, so you do any course, do your prereqs, then you take the MCAT. Yes. The HSE exam is it for you That's just for nursing? nursing. Okay, That's so you nursing. do um, your courses, prereqs, MCAT then um, medical school. Yeah. So you do the applications. If you get an interview, good for you. Interviews are like from like November to like March. Okay. Um, you do interviews, you hear whether you got in or not. And then school will start in August. So oh, you do all okay. of that. But it depends on when you want to start. Like I said, if you want to start right after undergrad, you mm -hmm. will take MCAT in your third year. Mm -hmm. If you want to take a gap year, then you don't have to take it then. You just have to gauge how long of a gap year you want to take. And then you have to plan your MCAT accordingly because you so need you a plan year. It one year ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then after med school, uh, in med school you could do after your four years, right? You do residency, right? Mm -hmm. And then after residency, if you want to continue, <laughs> you do fellowship. Oh. You can do a fellowship after residency, and like I've talked to doctors, and they say that to be honest. At that point, like you're already ten years in, two years will not kill you. <laughs> two years will not kill you. So, they just continue mm -hmm. because it's not like going back to school it's active learning so you're oh, learning on the job okay. you're going to have exams you're going to mm -hmm. have all those things but like i said you're already used to it so i just like <laughs> another three years not kill me <laughs> in the grand scheme of things i've been in school for 12 years so three years will not kill me that's really what it becomes at that stage doctors literally devote their whole life to school yeah. that cannot be me um <laughs> Okay, so after fellowship, then you, you certified doctor. I mean, you're a certified doctor from the point you, um, once you're done with residency, you are a specialized doctor. You're certified mm -hmm. when you graduate. I mean, everybody will be calling me doctor, doctor. <laughs> Even though I've not done anything, everybody's calling me doctor. So when you graduate, you're a doctor by name, mm -hmm. but you don't have any experience. Oh. So that's why residency exists, for okay. you to gain that experience okay. and for you to specialize. So in the US, I know like in Europe, in Nigeria and some other countries, when you graduate, you're a general practitioner. That's not the case in the US. There's no oh. such thing as a general practitioner. Oh. If you want to be a general practitioner, you have to do residency in family medicine or primary care. Like those are, well, primary care is a group that's a group mm -hmm. but you have to do um you have to do um a residency in in family medicine because family medicine is like general practice so that's the one where you just go to see a doctor and you tell them what's wrong mm. in the clinic that's a that's a family care physician so that's the shortest residency you can do and okay. generally ah i wouldn't say quote me on this because it depends like some states shorten it so that they can get more doctors out but i would say in a good state 
It might be two years, hardly ever. But the normal is like three years. The shortest residency I know is three years. Mm -hmm. So okay. So you would do four years of undergrad or five, depending on what you do. <laughs> four years of undergrad. Um, if you choose to do a gap year or do a master's, which is something else I may talk about later. Four years of undergrad, four years of med school, minimum three years of residency. So that's 11 years, minimum. Wow. Yeah. Cannot be me. <laughs> 